we'll start with introductions. Amazing, amazing. So, yeah, okay, so why don't you go first? Perfect. So um, in this space, I'm known as NFT Bad Boy. Um, I've transitioned now into my actual name because I think I'm more corporate. So you guys can call me Omari. Um, my background in NFTs is within the entertainment sector. So um, I started off with a collection called Triple MC. Now I've transitioned into a company called Natrum, where we've used blockchain technology to actually empower people to have more of a memorable and creative experience at events. And yeah, that's, that's my bad, guys. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jesse Williams, um, and I am uh, currently creating a project called Personal Dow. Uh, my background is primarily in math, um, but I transitioned over into the uh, software space uh, after completing that for a bit, um, and then fell down the, the Bitcoin rabbit hole, uh, like in maybe like 2019. Currently, the objective is to create um, a peer-to-peer financial application where the entire application, um, including the, you know, the every, from end to end, the entire application can be uh, built on chain, minted as an NFT, and then distributed as such. Um, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Nice. Great. Um, so I'm Michelle Peterson-Clark. Um, my brand is Content Marketing Queen, um, and I've been that for about 13 years now. So I worked in the marketing space in Web2 for a really long time um, and um, been in, in business for 25 years, so probably longer than half of the people in the room have been alive. Um, but um, I am creating a platform for content creators, so solopreneurs, people who run small businesses, um, and it's called web3contentlab.io, and it will be for them to be able to use and utilise NFTs for things like their membership sites or webinars or, um, you know, their their community and, and providing their newsletters and those sorts of things through NFTs. Um, and so um, I've been around the crypto space since 2017. My husband is Vice President Blockchain for um, Bolt.Global, which is a, um, a Web3 company, and they're looking at listing on the LSE later this year. So, um, you know, we, we kind of live and breathe Web3 and crypto and tokens, and it drives us insane sometimes, but, you know, that's the way it's going to be, I think, for a little while until we settle. So, um, let's talk about what you see happening within the space in terms of how people are going to um, look at things differently and, and in terms of our topic about utility and NFTs going forward. So let's have a chat okay. about that. I'm, I'm more than happy to jump in here, guys. So I believe what's going to take place is mass adoption, right? Um, a lot of people have transitioned from you know NFT collections. Now they're using blockchain technology to actually add value to their businesses. So people are finding problems and using NFTs and at different different blockchain systems to actually um, solve those solutions, um, similar to Natrum. So we understand that the entertainment industry at the moment, especially with events, man, especially with events, is just, just violated, you know, like it starts from the top, you know, the ticketing platforms, then it goes down to, you know, the record labels and then the, the um, the event managers and the artists, but from the bottom perspective, the fans are the ones that really power the whole ecosystem, right? And I feel like they're not they're not valued. Um, you know, you go to an ex you go to an event, you enjoy, you leave. But where's the experience? Where's you know something that I can hold on to, whether it could be a membership or something that I could actually take back with me and then say in five years time this could potentially go up in value. So that's what we're doing here at Nature and we're creating memorable experiences through using blockchain technology and I think in entertainment in the next, you know, three to five years time because events has actually gone from a gross rate from 10 billion and by time 2027 it's looking at 17 billion um, in terms of ticket sales, right? So if we can now incentivize people, people will be more inclined and more enforced to actually buy tickets and actually go to events because they know that they're going to get something back in return. And that's what it's all about, right? Utility, gains, but also having fun. <laughs> and I think that one of the things about that is that you can provide additional um, benefits to people for buying that thing one time. Like, I mean, if you go to a Justin Timberlake concert and you might buy the program and you've got the ticket stub, that's kind of it. 
um, buddy. Are, are you are you a Justin Timberlake fan? I have. I I took my one of my sons. Each of them I've taken to a rock concert as their first concert ever. So, yes, I took one of my sons to JT. So, so I'll make an NFT for you just for that. Thank you. You're welcome. That would be fantastic. <laughs> um, so yeah, Dan, my Daniel loves him. Um, so yeah, so. You know, like if you could get that as an ongoing thing, you know, like if, you know, if if JT um, made a little video and sent it to all the people who got their ticket NFT to his last concert, like could you imagine that, receiving an NFT that's, exactly. that's got JT going, hey, thanks for coming, you know, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Jesse. What I predict, hi. Hi, Maggie's here. All right, sorry about that, the row was closed, so. Had to run in heels right. a little bit. It's okay, so, um, <laughs> so, what, so what we're doing is we'll come to you um, in terms of introducing in a minute, but we'll just go on with the thing that we're talking about, and Jesse's going to have a chat now. Okay. Um, what I think we'll start to see is that a lot of people are going to get tired of the um, streaming services, uh, business structure, business model, the you'll own nothing and be happy type of business model, people are going to start demanding that um, they have ownership over the services that ultimately end up becoming critical to their lives. Um, that's going to drive a lot of NFT uh, adoption at some point when the NFT space begins to demonstrate the utility that it actually has. Um, it started with a bunch of degenism and you know, like uh, people trying to buy an NFT just to flip it. Um, I think that's fading. I don't really hear too many people talking about NFTs in that context anymore. I hear the conversation shifting to um, how can we actually use these NFTs so that they can actually become integral uh, to the systems that we all depend on in order to um, go about our lives. Um, and so I think that's gonna t going to lead to the desire to learn about NFTs, but it's still up to us to actually go ahead and create that utility um, that actually proves the worth uh, that this technology has. Agreed. Would you, would you like to introduce yourself now? Sure, yeah, go thank you. It. All right, okay, so hi, my name is Maggie, apologies again for uh, running a little late. Um, so my background is actually not in technology at all. I have a law degree. <laughs> so in 2017 is when I realized, okay, I might be a little too creative for this path I've taken. I went to school, I got a degree, I thought I was gonna be my job forever. Until I realized, you know what? I can start learning something on the weekend and let me just kind of start diving around and see where I get. So that happened to be blockchain. So in 2017, I basically made a switch and um, over the last five, six years, I've been in the crypto wallet space and also in the NFT space. So um, I actually worked my way up to be uh, the CEO of one of the largest um, crypto wallet company at the time, it's called JAXX. And um, afterwards, I realized NFT is really the way we can get to the mass. Because if you think about DeFi and wallets, people in the finance industry understands it. People who understand you know, lending, borrowing, you're like, okay, this is really cool. But then NFT is where the artists come in. It's where people who are a little more creative can come in as well. So the specific area of in, uh, NFT I got really interested in is e-commerce. If you think about what people do online, what is the most popular thing people do online besides shopping? It's social media and it's shopping, honestly. Um, we have eight billion people in the world and two billion shop online. So if you think about shopping as a giant four trillion dollar industry, Right now, a lot of it is broken because the ads aren't really working anymore. Last year, companies spent over $500 billion on advertising. But like when you see an ad on your Google or on your social media, you're kind of just ignoring it. So companies and brands aren't really connecting with their audience anymore. And what is connecting with your audience? It's about authenticity. It's about storytelling. It's about giving them something that makes them feel like, okay, I'm part of the community. I feel special. 
That's exactly what NFT does, right? Like we here all understand the value of NFT. NFT is something you can give it to people and you say, there's only a thousand of these, it's limited. If you get one, it means you're part of the special club. And as part of the special club, you now have access to, you know, if I have, if I'm a chocolate producer and I have this like very magical flavor of like peanut butter chocolate and only these a thousand people can get it, now they feel special. And there's something called token gated e-commerce. Like Shopify already has this all integrated. This is all already happening. We're not just like talking in theoretical anymore. This is happening right now. If you go on Shopify, they already have this thing called token gated. So when you go on Shopify, you can connect your wallet to it. If you hold a special NFT, you can go on that site. Everyone else is blocked off. So this is where I see the future is going. NFT right now is still like a buzzword, but if you think about it, it's the tool behind it that will allow brands to connect with their audience more. Their audience are gonna feel like, okay, I'm actually pretty special. And then when I no longer wanna be in this club, I can go and sell that NFT as well. And if this is a small brand today, and in 10 years it becomes the next Adidas, you bet your NFT is now gonna be a lot of money. And if you hold on to it, if you believe this local store, that you've been you know, buying stuff from for the last 10 years, now you can succeed with that store. That's the power of NFT. It's about building a local community of these people who really believe in you and growing with you, and then when you become successful, they share your success as well. I'm gonna end there, I don't wanna <laughs> just, you know. That was, um, great. that was great. But yeah, like this is the part of NFT that I got really interested in. And so I'm the founding advisor for this DAO. DAO is basically a fancy term for decentralized community. It's called GMGN, uh, good morning, good night. It actually came off of a tweet, like <laughs> so cool. Like this whole community started because of one tweet. And basically what this DAO does is they partner up um, NFT communities with these brands. So one of the first examples is we partner up with this NFT community called Entree Monkeys, which is pretty big. Like a bunch of you probably heard of them. A lot of OGs will hold your NFTs. And we partner them up with the chocolate manufacturer. That's why I was using that example. And so we will sell the chocolate bars to the NFT holders and they get a special token accessed example. And then the next one we're looking at board Ape, we already have a license from a board ape holder, and we're looking at that with a serial. So these are just examples. Like, you know, we can have so many examples, but the key here is really understanding that you can use NFT as a tool for whatever project or company you're working with and help them to start building that relationship with the audience, with the customer, instead of just using advertising or instead of just spending a lot of money on your traditional social media or marketing. So that I really want everyone to like take home with. Right. Nice, nice. Um, I wanna go into the first word there where it says um, adoption. So um, this is my key focus for right about now, right? So um, what I've understood in the entertainment industry is that people are not close-minded, but um, they're not looking to make changes. Everybody wants to focus on the traditional methods, right? Um, they don't really care about you know, giving value back to people. It's just more about how much money they can make. Um, when I first actually host, hosted, hosted our first event um, using our Natrium platform where you, know, you could have um, a digital asset as a ticket instead of just a typical ticket with no value, I realized that there were so many barriers to entry that you know, people wasn't as inclined to actually take us in, right? So what we did is, as a team, went back to the drawing board and we evaluated everything and we realized that we need to find a way to bridge the gap. Everybody uses the word bridge the gap, but nobody really puts it into action, right? So we decided to add Web2 elements to onboard people. A lot of people don't know how to make crypto wallets. Um, how long did it take you guys to make your first crypto wallet? I can imagine you went through so many different stages to just buy um, some BTC. I bet it took forever, right? Um, but what we understood is the onboarding process is the key thing, right? And that's how adoption of utility of NFTs is actually going to pick up the pace. Um, so the reason for nature and the reason why entertainment needs us is because these are three major factors which actually is just destroying everything. Fraudulent tickets, right? It's in plain view, right? NFTs provide all of the security that you need to separate people from you know, having a traditional ticket, which is a paper copy or something that can't be tracked. And then an NFT is recorded on the blockchain with the metadata. Two plus two equals four, guys. I don't get why this is not happening already. And then violations on the secondary market, right? It's the worst thing that, that we see right by now, Some, such as yourself. You're a super fan of, sorry, who again? 
There we go. She's a super fan, right? So super fans like herself, like Michelle, right, is that um, she wants to make sure she can get a ticket for the best possible price. Understand this, the best possible price. When it first comes out, so $50 for instance, right? You go into the secondary market. No, you go, first and foremost, you try to buy your ticket. All the bots take everything. The amount of times I've tried to get a ticket to go see 50 Cent or something like that, and I just get robbed for my money because I'm a fan, right? Go to the secondary market, it's $500. How do we solve this? How do we solve this, right? We now provide utility to loyal members. So you guys have first access, right? How can you do that? Through an NFT. Two plus two equals four again. What is going on here? Why is nobody already doing this? Um, and the next thing is actually incentivizing people. As I said previously before, incentives are key. The way we live our day-to-day -day lives, we want to be rewarded. We want to be rewarded, right? Imagine if there was a way that, you know, every single person that sits in this room now, they get an NFT of this panel here. Imagine each and every one of us had some form of success, right? We actually do have an NFT for being a speaker here. It's there pretty cool. Go. They airdropped yeah, it for a while. It's like, okay, okay. So and it's all unique as well, which is like, oh, this is so cool. So if you guys want to airdrop for when, you know, my business is successful, I'll allow you to sell it for whatever price. No problem at all. Yeah, but that's exactly what I mean, right? Utility is key, and I think that's what we're trying to provide here at Natrium. So our key, our key focus is your ticket, your event, your experience, and we really hope, you know, later on in the future, we can actually um, be a part. Or I like the, and I'm do sorry, the I didn't mean to yeah. cut you off. No, it's all good, bro. It's all good. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I like that um, our motives are different. Facts, Notice that, yeah. you know, even though we all have different motives, like mine are more of the, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say existential nature, but I'm more so concerned about, like, government overreach and big tech overreach yeah. and maintaining sovereignty of the things that you need, like your own money um, or your own system for pooling funds with people that you know in real life and want to grow financial um, you know uh, well-being with uh, these things in order for them to happen you're gonna need some type of unit of account that doesn't depend on these subscription services or some type of centralized ledger system or some type of government saying what you can and cannot have. Um, with that being said, uh, I'll, I'll let you. I think too that we need to start thinking about how um, bigger brands are going to assist us in bringing people into this space because um, you know they currently have the customers that are not in Web3 who need to be in Web3 for mass adoption to occur. That's such a good point. And so, you know, like if we think about it, MetaMask currently have around 30 million wallets. Starbucks alone have 27.5 million users. So if you think about that, MetaMask in this space is, is the largest wallet um, provider. 30, like mil tiny, 30 million people and only one brand in Web2 has almost as many customers and, and that doesn't include all the other people that make coffee and shakes and, you know, let alone, exactly. let alone other Shoes, food, you know, chocolate. McDonald's, yeah, anything. So, like, I think the hope is the big brands are already seeing this. Like, Starbucks yes, they are. just, they I don't are. know if everyone knows, like, Starbucks just released their NFT, like, last month. Which yes, I so, the, like, oh, so the so Odyssey cool. program, and, and it's, it's being used as well, but, and it's being used, but people don't know when they're using it that they're in Web3, that, they that they're getting an NFT for it, and that seamlessness is going to be what makes this sector become um, more popular and be infiltrated by more companies, more brands, more people. You know, like when you... You know, when you get into a, a taxi and, and someone asks you, you know, what program you joined this week, um, it'll be an NFT, but they won't call it that and they won't know that that's what it is. Um, but we'll know. And that's a great thing, though, because we'll be able to assist those people. And, you know, we are going to have to do a lot of education in this space. You know, there's there's people who might not have liked school and they might not like watching those videos on, um, you know, YouTube that necessarily teach you particular things, even though, you know, lots exactly. of people do. But we are going to have to spend the next 18 months to two years educating people first and not using the words that we use now. So we can't talk about, 
you know, blockchains, decentralization, t you know, NFTs, fungible, non-fungible, all of this stuff, because you, it, you just lose people in the first five seconds. Exactly. Yeah, I just learned a term uh, a few days ago, Web 2.5. Has everyone heard of that? Like, raise your Never. hand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I thought was pretty cool. It's like on the f uh, user interface, right, on the front end, it just looks like normal, like, Web 2 stuff, the internet we use. But then on the back end, a lot of times, it's like, okay, you would hold something in the wallet. The company actually has access to the wallet. So it's not exactly your wallet. However, you're still holding the NFT in your wallet. So it's a really good way to introduce to people to this concept of NFT or like digital goods or whatever it's called. But then, you know, you make the whole um, user flow extremely seamless. So it's like you just enter your email, you get your NFT, cool. You don't even need to set up a wallet. You don't need to know what a wallet is. You won't lose your wallet because it's just your email and your password. That's it. Like that's really a easy way to onboard the majority of the people into this ecosystem. And I think too that, um, you know, people have assets. So they have a house or they have a car, or they own their furniture. So people know what assets are. So if we start talking about digital assets, then they'll know, oh yeah, that's something that's on my computer. So, you know, something that's just really low level at speaking um, with them at their level rather than saying, hey, we're up here and over here and you've got to come over here and learn these terms that, that this exclusive group of us use um, that you actually don't know anything about um, and Definitely. that within the first 10 seconds you lose people. So, you know, like I, I've been seeing recently a few more um, articles and things on Medium and Substack where people are starting to not use the the language that we use, but they're actually starting to use normal language um, so that um, you can actually have normal people understand what this space is about and what um, we're going to need to have them help us go forward with it. Uh, yeah. I, just, I just want to jump in there, guys. Um, so talking talking of losing people, right? Um, I'm somebody that thrives off you know, memorable experiences and making people remember specific moments, right? So. I've, ca I've counted about 35 people in this room, so we already have a community here. You've already counted, eh? Already While counted. we're sitting so here. So, could everybody please get your phones out for us, guys? Please, let's let's make this let's make this realistic now. And could everybody please take a picture? And I want to explain to you why, right? So, when I put this mask on my face, could everybody please take a picture? And you're gonna understand exactly why I decided to do this. And wait and see. Of the whole panel, please. Now I want to see what what's, um, what y'all about to see. So that's a great segment about a segue into what I think is that we have to stop doing that because um, not not for you doing yeah, that, but yeah. actually <laughs> saying who we are and what we stand for rather yeah. than hide behind masks or fancy costumes or yeah. monkey Guys, we, pictures as our PFP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we have about two minutes. Yeah. Should we yeah. open it up for questions from the yeah, audience? Jump, jump it. Yeah. Someone please ask me why yeah. I've done that. Anyone have questions? Up. We have about a minute and a half, actually. I want to give you a chance if you have anything about NFT, just raise Any your questions? hand. If there's no... Oh, okay. Our application is run on the Internet Computer Protocol blockchain. Uh, as far as I know, it's the only blockchain where you can actually uh, put the user interface on chain as well. And so uh, it, creates, it creates the opportunity for you to have an entire application and own an entire application, not just the data that the application uses. And so you can own your own URL to the application um, using NFTs, you can say who you can you can determine who the owner of this application is. You can transfer ownership of that application. Um, this is something that's necessary because, like I said, my concerns are more you know uh, I don't like to be dramatic, but you know like government overreach or big tech overreach. It's necessary because when an application is targeted, they'll pick any centralized point that they can do that they can find to disrupt the access that people have to the application and so if we build our back ends on chain but never bring but all of our front ends and our user interfaces are on AWS all it takes is for a company 
or any extortionist or anybody to um, attack AWS and twist their arm. Uh, we are. We have to time. go. So yeah, right. building <laughs> trust is the future of this space. Exactly. Yeah, Definitely. I think just to round up, like we all come from different angles, and just want to leave you as you know, this tool, honestly, NFT. In a couple of years, you won't even hear about it. But all the apps, or most of the apps on your phone, you'll probably be using it in one way or another. So all Definitely. of you here, just by sitting here today, I think just by wanting to learn, just by at NFT and NYC, is already doing something ahead of probably like ninety percent of the people there. And if you want want to keep digging in it, this is going to be like before internet was like 1996, right? So this is the time right now. All right. Amazing. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks to all the speakers. <laughs>